Welcome back to our 99th episode of the Launcher Farm Show. Ryan interviewed Laura Vandette with the Bright Real Estate team in Hamilton. In this episode, Laura and I talk about why she chose to give back to her farm with an incredible community garage sale and how that's impacted her business over the years. Laura also shares how she went from around 70 participants her first year to over 180 participants in the last year. And she shares what strategies she used to connect with the homeowners to drastically increase her referrals and strengthen her relationships. And Laura shares a super easy way that agents can start a garage sale or something similar in their own farm. And we talk about how she plans to grow her event and bring even more value to her community in the future. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Laura. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith. And today we've got a great guest. It's Laura Vendette. Laura is a realtor in my office, actually. We've known each other for a number of years. She's with the Bright Real Estate team. She lives in Hamilton and has an awesome thing we're going to be talking about today. Before we dive in, Laura, take a second. Tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, again, like Ryan said, I'm Laura Vandette. Um, I, one of the things that I have always loved to do is build community. And one of the things I have not enjoyed doing or not enjoyed the idea of doing is door knocking or cold calling. So this was community building was a way that I, uh, could see myself really building my, um, uh, my database or the people that I work with and my yep. community on top of that. So yeah, that's, um, that's my passion. Awesome. So we're going to dive into what you do, which is community garage sale. But before we do that, I want to go back to like the kind of beginning and the history. So you, how long have you been in the business and what did that first year or two look like for you in the business? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I have been in the business for about seven years. Um, the first year or two, I actually joined um, a coaching program through our office. And um, that's actually how it got suggested to me to um, create this garage sale or come up with the idea of this garage sale. Um, the first year I had a couple of deals, nothing major, maybe six deals, seven deals. I was on a team, a different team. And, um, yeah, I, I joined bold and, um, yeah, just kind of an average, perhaps a uh, start to my career. And now you're, I know you're in one of the top teams in our office. You've, you guys have done incredible things, but the great thing with what I think you've done also is you've been, you're part of the team, but you're also doing kind of your own, your, the, the garage sales, yours, it's, it's your baby. It's something you've been taking care of. So can you talk to us about the beginning of that garage sale and that launch and what that looked like for you and, and the why behind it as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so that first year I was avoiding making calls and door knocking, um, as I guess some people do, uh, I certainly did. Um, my coach had suggested, well, what is, what other avenues would you be comfortable with? And he had suggested his, his, he's, um, comes from a family of real estate agents and his family, his father had created, um, a garage sale in the neighborhood that he served. And I thought I could do that. I could do that. I could totally, I see myself kind of um, putting the pieces together. I didn't have a template or anything like that, but um, I could see myself uh, pulling all the strings together to, to create this. Um, and my why was, I, I think, so, you know, I, in real estate, sometimes um, we get focused on uh, money on earning an yep. income and, and producing and that kind of thing. Right. And that, that kind of went against my grain. So I thought, okay, what can I do? Um, that maybe isn't, that isn't the focus of, and giving to my community was one way that I thought, oh my gosh, this is like an answer. It answers this and this and this and this. And it was, it was a perfect solution. That's awesome. And that's a big part of what I believe in. If anyone's watched the show, they know I talk about CPR, which is what I consider is the foundation of farming, which is community positioning and relationships. And it starts with that community. And I know that's a big part of what you've done is we put the community first instead of the transaction. So many agents are focused on, like you said, the money, and they're so focused on beating their own chest and talking about how great they are. And they don't put the community they serve ahead of their their business. And the agents who have done incredibly well with their farms are the ones who are community focused, who put those people first. Then you learn to then position yourself as that, an ex expert and ambassador, which was what I teach all the time. You become the ambassador for that community you serve and you show them that I'm an expert. It doesn't have to be that I've sold more homes or I'm the top agent. It can be, I'm an expert in 
the community. I'm an expert in the local businesses. I'm an expert in connecting with people. I'm an expert in whatever. Then people learn to build trust and then you start to build relationships. And I know for you with your with your garage sale, it's a, a long-term relationship you've been building with people. And I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into it in a few minutes, but you've built some really strong relationships over the years that are you, you couldn't get from just cold calling or just door knocking or, or just internet leads. Yeah. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So for you, you mentioned community is a big part of, of what you're, why you do this. Can you talk a bit about why that's important to you and what the community focus for you is, is all about? Sure. Um, why that's important to me. Uh, you know, uh, I just believe in the, the, yeah, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. I think <laughs> I, uh, there's so much in the world that's not positive that if mm. we can do something that really impacts where we, where we grow or where we live, I think that's, yeah, why not? Why wouldn't we? Right. So, um, one of the things that really floats my boat, if I can say it is on when we do the garage sales on a Saturday morning, it's always been on a Saturday morning. I walk down the street, nobody knows who I am, or some people might, the hosts might recognize me, but the people shopping have no clue. And I like, you know, whatever Sally has her new doll, it's under her arm and mom and dad are pulling her in their wagon down the street. They've got new things, new to them things under their arm. And, you know, they might be dragging something else. Like it's, and it's just like a magical feeling when you see all of this that you've kind Mm. of helped to put together, you see um, the influence. So it's also uh, the environmental impact of this is what really um, excites me as well. Like Mm. most of us have way too much stuff. Um, So if somebody else can use it, Hey, I think that's phenomenal. Awesome. I think I kind of went off the rails on that no, question. No, no, that, that's bit, good. But okay. And, and it came back to, it's, it was that good feeling that you felt and, and knowing that you're making an impact too is, is a big part of it. And again, this is why I think it's important to be community focused because it keeps us in the game. I find a lot easier and a lot longer than just transaction. And I find so many agents burn out from the, the, the process of real estate. And I know myself and when I'm just focusing on transactions, it's like, oh, this sucks sometimes when you have ups and downs. But when you when you put the community first and you're starting to make an impact in the community, it's like, okay, this is why I'm doing this. There's, there's more to this and it gives you more meaning and more validity to what you're doing and makes it easier to, to ride through the tough times, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you got it started, obviously you had never done this before. Did you work from any templates? Did you research it or did you just kind of like, hey, I'm just going to do this and kind of figure it out? I pretty much. So I did know that I had the option of going to my coach's, you know, father to ask yeah. uh, some questions. But generally speaking, I just thought through the process. So people had to be notified that this was happening. Yeah. Um, and let me know if you want me to get into some of the. the yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Um, people had to be notified. So I created some postcards. I hand delivered them. Actually, because it was my first year, I was really uh, watching how much I spent. I still spent quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But having said that, you know, a lot of people buy leads or do whatever. Um, It was still worth it to me to like make an investment, right? So I just bought some some specific color. I went to Staples, uh, you know, a supply store, uh, office supply store, got some paper, had printed out some, some of the details of it. Um, had a couple of people, I may, believe I may have even had you proof one of my sheets at so, one yeah. point. Yeah, I kind of remember that. Um, and I just handed it out to door by door. I actually didn't put it in their mailbox. I put it like in their door handle, rolled it up, put it in the door handle, hand delivered it to the whole neighborhood, put it on Facebook. Um, and, you know, just tried to sort of uh, circulate the information as much as possible. So that was the first thing. Um, and once people started registering, I just made a really uh, simple uh, WordPress Facebook or WordPress website yep. um, where people could go click to register, um, got their name, their number, their email address, <clears throat> excuse me, um, registered them automatically, you know, through the website. Um, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm, I don't want to dive into too much, okay. by, too much off at one, one sure. chunk, so- but as you have- so it was kind of the, 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 the beginning part was kind of manual labor going out there and getting out there. Yep. And then obviously you got registrations. Do you remember how many people you had register at the, that first year? Yeah. The first year was about 77, which wow. I was kind of surprised about it, wow. it. The, the neighborhood was, is rather large just for a couple of dynamics. I, I chose kind of a large, large area, which I wouldn't recommend looking, looking back, I would choose a smaller area. So how many homes I was going to be one, one of my questions were in the area. I'd say 4,000. Okay. So a good size. Which, yeah. 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 Okay. So then you, you got out there. 
from you, you got people registered. Obviously, they were excited about it. They want to sign up for it. Did you do anything to promote it to the community? Because I think that's a big part that a lot of people yes. miss out on. So what, what did that look like for you at the beginning? Yeah. So um, so a lot of Facebook. I did some Facebook ads, which weren't expensive, right? Like you can kind of target a specific area. Um, right. One of the other things that I think is probably most important is because we're doing, so, as agents, we're doing something for our community. I don't think, and I didn't ask for any kind of registration fee. Some people do. I, I know a couple of people who do neighborhood uh, garage sales and they ask for a small donation, but, um, or, you know, fee. Um, what I suggested was um, that people invite or make po social media posts. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'm doing this for us. It, I, it, as a group, there's so much more that we can do social with social media than I can do on my own. Would you, yep. would you be willing to make a, a, a social media post? Um, and they just shared mine nice. and it got shared to a number of different groups and uh, Facebook pages. Um, there's a website called Garage Sailor. Uh, it's like G R S L R. Uh, I posted it on there. I posted it in our local uh, newspaper. Um, those were the the main ones. Okay. And then of course, um, you know, just, uh, I think I may have also done a second round of flyers inviting people to come out and shop. Shoot. Okay. So the Good. first one, yeah. first invite was about three months in advance. I tried to, to, or maybe two months in advance. And then the second one as a reminder to come out to shop was maybe two or three weeks in advance. Okay. Awesome. And that first year you did it, obviously went off. Did you, how was the feedback? Did you, were you? Uh, was it a success were you happy with it yeah yeah it really was um I'm trying to think like I I don't remember receiving any complaints about not having enough shoppers okay. that year that was gonna be um, a question I had yeah a lot of people had a great time uh the weather was was okay uh one of the other things that I recommend is having a rain or shine day you're okay. just doing it rain or shine and the reason for that is how do you notify all the shoppers? If it's only kind of not right. so nice out, how do you notify all the shoppers that, oh, it, the rain date is kicking in yeah. the morning of, right? Yep. So that's yep. just um, my my two cents on on that. Um, yeah. So how did you or did you promote yourself during that before or during and after time? So I probably have not done an amazing job of that. That is where <laughs> I uh, need to make some improvements. However, having said that, in these years, so I, this was the first year, um, or I started this my first year in sort of my, the second half of my first year in real estate. Um, and since then, I would say 50% of my deals at least come from the momentum wow. of, of the garage sale. So a That's huge awesome. amount. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, re repeat the question one more time. The promoting yourself during that, because I oh, find yes. some agents have a hard time where they're like, okay, I'm, I want to, I want to help but how do I do that in a tactful way or in a yeah. way that isn't going to be overwhelming? Yeah. So um, I send emails. I, I try. So I'm uh, a really strong communicator when it comes to working with my clients through a transaction. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to make sure that they feel like I'm communicated with them throughout. So I make sure that through like at, when people sign up for the garage sale, I make sure that they have the registration uh, confirmation and then I send them small bits of information nothing overwhelming, but some, some information leading up to the garage sale to just help them know, yep. you know, that that's kind of my MO. I also, um, this took me a couple of years, but in that email, I say, please, um, PS, you know, um, if there's anything I can do to help you with your real estate needs, please consider uh, allowing me to apply for that role. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty, uh, sheepish about it <laughs> in some ways, but yeah. uh, I'm getting a little bit better. Nice. So obviously the first year you set up went off w well, the second year, what did you do differently or what did you do or would you have done differently after doing it the first year? Oh, that's a good question. I think I've probably mentioned some of those little tricks and tips throughout. However, um, what did I do differently the next time? The next year we had, I want to say 110 people register. Wow. Um, and then the third year it was like 150 and 150. And this wow. year we had 180. So each year, you know, just the building momentum, um, I think I got a little bit more um, uh, savvy with some of the marketing. So instead of having just a plain colored sheet, I would have a colored flyer or a yep. colored postcard, you know, as you have the budget to do it, but it does not have to be expensive. 
one of the things that I uh, was going to do my first year, I was going to go to the dollar store and get a sign that says garage sale, you know, one of those red and white signs and put that in people's yards or give that to people to put in their yards. And my husband said, why would you do that? Why would you not get like a poster or, or, you know, like a foam core board, have some of your details on it along with the garage sale and put that in 150 uh, yards throughout the neighborhood. So that is what I would do or what I have done. It's it's nice. a bit of an investment, but I yep. use them year after year after year. Um, again, not to kill the environment with wasting them each year, but. Um, yeah, yeah I think that's great. And I think that's important to, like you said, you're thinking long-term with that. It, it, there's an investment up front, but that's something you can use repeatedly pending your information doesn't change. But as long as you keep the same information, you can use that over and over again. And that becomes part of your branding. That becomes part of who you are and people will recognize that. So you do still you're still doing it do you do just one a year or are you doing more than one at all no. i probably could do two a year what there's like a natural kind of divide between the, the neighborhood mm-hmm. um but at this point i'm just doing one it's, it's a, a lot of work up front and i try yes. to time it so that um when i have the most of the work to do it's a quieter t- season yeah so, um, and for people who don't know, we're up in Canada and it's, we have winter, so you can't do them in the winter. So we have even a half a season that, that some people could do things all year round. So we have to be more intentional with what we're doing. So I want to ask you then about the getting in front of the audience that are coming to buy. Are you, are you doing anything to capture their information or to get in front of them, to promote to them? Or is this more of a local play to, to kind of be in front of those, the sellers? Is, yeah, it is. It has been more of a local play. Um, aside from maybe some of the people that are coming to shops see my signs on right. the, the yards, but I have not been able to find a way to engage with um, the shoppers very, mm. very well. If anybody has any ideas, I would love to hear them. But that's um, that's why I'm asking because uh, Nicole, my partner, she's she just did one this summer her first garage sale too, and that was something we did. And I'll, I'll share in a, in a few minutes some of the things that we did too that worked well, but. Uh, that was something we were like, how do we capture the people's attention? And it was tricky. I I know for myself, one of the things that we did when I did a garage sale for my own business a few years ago was we had like a, we had ice or freezies and popsicles and then drinks. And we were like in one central place and we said free and we got people to come to us. And then we kind of could chat with people, but it it was okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't as effective as, as some other things that, that I think you could do. Um, so for you then, Obviously, you're getting people that must be regulars that are doing this, that have probably been doing this from the beginning. Do you mm-hmm. find most of the people that are doing it are the same people or are you reaching kind of new people each year? I'm reaching new people each year. I probably built up my database to about 600 people over wow. the course of the last little while That's awesome. um, from the garage sales. So I would say maybe, you know, 30% of them are repeats um, each year, depending on nice. the year. But uh, yeah. That's awesome. And you mentioned that you were worried that there might've been not enough people coming to the garage sale. Uh, did, did you cap off that number? Cause I know with Nicole, she was terrified that she can have too many garage sales and not enough people. Have you ever put a cap or is it just how many people sign up? Hmm. I haven't put a cap on it yet. Um, so it, so until now it's been however many people are willing to, to sign up and put their items out. And one other thing that might be worth noting is um, because it's a community event when there are oftentimes there's, so say 150 people sign up, I would say there's double that in the actual mm. amount of garage sales. The people that just, you know, maybe don't have the time or the interest or whatever in signing up, that's totally fine. And when I come to their garage sale and they're like, oh, you're the, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. you know, but we didn't sign up. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. Great. You know, it's it's all about community at that point. And um, it really doesn't make a difference. That was going to be one of my questions is that, do you find you get people? Because I know Nicole did hers. There was people who like kind of tagged on and we were a little, a little myth because like because we did a, we did a fundraiser and it was like okay you guys didn't participate in that and it's like you kind of tacked on but it's like you can't stop someone from doing a garage sale so obviously you, yeah. you're getting that as well um Absolutely. for are you are you doing anything with local businesses to tie them into it or have you done anything to kind of bring other people than just the, the, the people hosting the garage sales yeah so there's two parts of that for me um at least um one is we have uh or uh, as well uh, connected with local organizations to support them in some way. Okay. So with the garage sale hosts, I asked them to make a donation um, 
from their proceeds of, I usually say 20% and everybody, you know, has to make that call for themselves yep. um, to, a, I usually specify an organization and it's up to them to, to make that donation. It's on nice. the honor system. They just go to their website and make the donation or to the site, whatever. Yep. Um, and the other half of that is I have, so I, um, live and work in an area where there's a big business strip and I mm -hmm. have really tried to kind of pull some of those businesses in without much success <laughs> you know like I think a lot of them are not franchised businesses so they're right. just mom and pop really trying hard to just keep things afloat yep. um, and they don't always have the capacity to uh, engage a lot with outside things so um, at this point, you know, not, not a lot, despite okay. some uh, effort in the past. Yeah. And do you think, get them to like put up flyers and stuff like that? Or, or yes. Stuff? Yeah. There are some, some businesses I know that are happy to do that. And I pop in and yep, they'll put Great. flyers. Awesome. I think also the longer you do it, the more traction you have, the more people, you know, you can count on. And then it's like, okay, you did it last year. Can you do it again? It probably makes it a lot easier to, to do that again. So overall, would you, how much time would you say you've put into this or invest it per year? Because obviously some people sit here and go, oh, it's great, but I don't have the time to do this. Like, can you do you kind of rough estimate of how much energy you put into it? Hmm. Okay. So um, I, uh, so <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. It, uh, I would say it's a, it's my full-time job for maybe at least a full month before. Okay. So 40 hours a week, if not 50 hours a week for the full month before. And then, uh, you know, a couple months prior to that, it's here and there. It's a, you know, a, a number of hours here and uh, just planning for it. So, uh, but you don't have to, you don't have to do it as, as big as the 77 yeah. the first time, right? You start yeah. small and you build on the momentum that you get yeah. each year. And are you still manually dropping off the flyers yourself or are you having delivered? I have them delivered. Yeah. That's yeah. A good leverage, <laughs> especially again, once you have the recognition. And I think that's, I would say if I was doing it, if I was telling an agent to do it, I would say the first year or two to get out there, to connect, to meet people so that people know who you are. And once the momentum builds, then you can kind of back off on that and, and, and do what you've done, which is, which is awesome. Um, are you doing different now after doing this for six or seven years than you did at the very beginning? Much different, or is it kind of the same format and structure? It is this is quite similar. However, this year I'm really, because I've been so shy about asking for business, you know, from people, I, ha I am trying to be more overt. So the people that have participated in the garage sale in the, the you know, the last year I've been doing pop buys. So okay. this year I had a big jug of uh, windshield fluid. I've had a little hanger on it. I think I have it here somewhere. But um, a hanger that says, let me, or a door hanger, let me help you see the market more clearly. Nice. You know, something just sort of kitschy like that. Yep. And um, so I've been really trying to stay in touch more. I am sure that there is someone out there that has an amazing system that I have not discovered yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for, you know, the system to, to not bother them because they're my neighbors and I don't want them to walk the other way when they see me walk down the road with my dog. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but also, may, you know, stay top of mind because there are certainly people that have participated in the garage sale in the past who chose a different agent I'm like, right Ugh, it's yeah. Darn, yeah. you know so what are you doing then after the garage sale till the next year are you doing much to follow up with them and, and create value over the year i try to um i'm it's a work in progress um so doing things like that like pop buys um and once i have the date of the next year's garage sale i send out a save the date mm. card um, I may send a, a, oh, I send a thank you note for participating. Yeah. That is a big one. And then, um, I try to send uh, an email requesting feedback. So just to try to engage and find out what was, what worked really well, what didn't work well. Yep. Um, a Christmas card. Um, this year I'm going to try to use, um, a little, uh, an email that's like, you know, maintenance tips for the spring maintenance tips for the summer, that kind of thing. Yeah. So a combination of door knocking, um, a combination of email, sometimes calls, sometimes just, you know, uh, touching base, asking if they would consider um, using me if they have any real estate needs, that kind of thing. So, awesome. yeah. 
and that's I think that's important to do is is to like I said it's it's about the garage sale, but then you can tie in real estate throughout the year during the garage sale. It's it's more about the garage sale and the community stuff, and then you can kind of pepper in the stuff you're doing over the year to kind of re-engage or remind them of that. Uh, I want to ask you about the if you had any awesome stories or anything that's come out of it where you're like heartwarming. You said the, the girl with the doll in her arm, but is there anything that's like really come out of this where you're just like, man, I never never expected this to happen or just so mm-hmm. touching from it. I don't know if this is touching, but there is a gentleman uh, that comes from, I believe it's North York to come to the garage sale each wow. year. And he said it is hands down the best garage sale, the best organized, you know, the best, I don't know what specifically, but he he just said like, it is just amazing. He comes from North York and he uh, touches base with me at the end of the day and says, these are the finds that I found. Nice. I think he's, he might be a picker kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of the a big one that I uh, that comes to my mind when you ask about that's awesome. stories. Yeah. And I think you probably do have people who then, from the consumer's perspective, who do know about it and do go regularly and they like to, to go and do that. Uh, I want to ask you too then about the, you said you talked about some local business. Have you partnered with them in anything else other you mentioned some trying to get promotions up have you done anything with them outside of the garage sale or done anything with them after you've built some of those relationships um businesses hmm you know what off the top of my head i can't think of anything um yeah i can't think of anything okay We'll chat after this and we'll give you some ideas sounds like, good yeah thanks of, uh, okay so yeah i was i wanted to to then kind of wrap up a bit and, and and go and ask you if you were to start this all over again, knowing what you know now, knowing the, the doing this for a number of years that you've done, what would you do differently? What would you tell yourself at that very first year when you were getting this started? Uh, choose a manageable size area. Okay. And by manageable, it, you know, from my experience, at least I would say maybe 2000. Yeah. Um, I know farm areas are much smaller than that typically, but um to make it worthwhile, like have a community actual garage sale, maybe a thousand to 2000 people. That would yeah. be the biggest thing that um, I noticed uh, or that I would change. Yeah. Okay. So just the overall size in this. So then I'll ask you, why did you choose that size in the first year then? So the neighborhood that I live in, um, it, it's, it has one name. It's called Crown Point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, to divide it, and having said that there was some stigma with one side and not with the other yeah. i didn't want to repeat that stigma or reinforce <laughs> yeah. that stigma yeah that's what it was that, that makes sense i know the area so i know i know yeah. what you mean so yeah okay and okay if you were to give our viewers one last piece of advice if they're thinking about putting something like this into their business what advice would you give them i would say go for it despite you know you might not know all of the steps i would just say try um just give it a shot. And I, I am always happy, like so happy when people ask me questions. So don't be shy to contact myself or Ryan. Um, you know, um, most people who have success at doing something are happy to share how, yeah. how it worked well for them. And no one's going to try to go in and compete against you in a, when you've been doing it for as long as you have and as, the size you've been doing it. I think you're, you've are you got it locked down. So yeah. that's pretty good. That's awesome. <laughs> so we always wrap up with a best book. So what's one book you'd recommend that's had an impact in your life or you think would have an impact on our viewers? You know, um, I cannot remember the name of it. It's over uh, behind me, but it is um, How to Work with Your Contacts. Um, and that that was uh, really impactful. I read that really early in my career. Let me just see here. Oh, it's called Make Your Contacts Count. Okay, awesome. So um, that would be a book that I would suggest, as well as Ninja Selling. Yes, Ninja Selling good, is yeah, a good. really good, um, a good one as well. And they have a great podcast as well. So yeah. I like their podcast. Okay, so how can our viewers check out what you're up to, connect with you, and find out more? You mentioned to reach out to you. How can they do that then? So um, if they want to contact me directly, uh, my email is l vandet at gmail.com and l-v-a-n-d-e-t-t-e at gmail.com. Um, the website for the garage sale, which I'm happy to have anybody take a browse at, it is uh, crownpointgaragesale.com. Perfect. Well, I'll put those in the show notes so people can check that out. And I think it's awesome that you have that you bought the domain because I think it's important to have that repeatable brand that you can use over and over again. And it's something that's, that's awesome to do. So 
Laura, I really thank you for being on the show. It's awesome to see where you've come from and, and those first few years getting started to, to where you're at now and the success you've had with that. And I know that if our viewers even take a fraction of what you, you teach them and, and implement that into their business, I know they'll have success. So thank you for sharing it. Thank you for sharing your passion. And uh, I'm really looking forward to having my viewers check this out and hopefully implement it. Thank you so much, Ryan. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.